What up, though, y'all? How you doing? I know, like, lately this, with a Nipsey Hussle story, has been a, a sore spot since he was murdered. What happened, why it happened, all of these things coming out after, finding out he was saving people and helping people from being extorted, finding out Gilly was robbed, Nipsey gave him some money, finding out DJ Khaled was pressed when he, we did not know well, we knew how it looked was this. We thought if you went fucking with people, then they would just rob you in California. We didn't know that it was a whole, okay, when they get here, they go into this hotel, and we going to catch them at this restaurant because they got to go there, and we going to press them. That shit's sad. And over the past couple of years, this is something that's just been being exposed to the rest of the world that... That California out there living like crabs, for real. That's a real crab mentality. As a man, I couldn't see my way of eating as taking something from another man. You know what I'm saying? The times I've ever had to take something, I was at a real low point as a person. So I couldn't see me living at that... You, you get where I'm going with this? But nonetheless... How Nipsey got killed, why he got killed, what was said to him, before, after, all of them things kind of matter. But one thing that's been missing is the acknowledgement of people trying to press DJ Cali, and that being the start of dissension between Nipsey Hussle and Big U. Now, I do look fake. That Big U and DJ Khaled is friends now after he pressed them and Nipsey died. It does look fake that you know you got pressed, Khaled. And then the dude that came there to save it or stop it died. And y'all just say nothing. You ain't got to say I think somebody killed him. You ain't got to say none of that. But letting us know that he helped you out. A situation like that is kind of... How could you not say something? Excuse me. I know y'all in this contagious. How could you not say something? Anyway, dig this. Uh, when the Cali didn't like pull up or whatever, uh, Nip hadn't arrived yet, so the homies had pressed him. So in the process of impressing him, boom, the phone go there. Big U on the phone. Yeah. Had the phone to Cali. Big U got the phone. Cali, hey man, shoot me your number. Bam, bam, that's it. He said, exchanged phone numbers. It was nothing. It was, it was nothing. So they took it like, oh. Now, is that not exactly what the person who pressed DJ Khaled told you happened? And didn't he tell you that he felt funny because somebody sent him over there to press a millionaire and he left with a phone number? Didn't he explain that to us? But I digress. So loose cannon wasn't lying, huh? Big you down there pressing. No, Big you found out Khaled was in the hood. Slid the phone, exchanged phone numbers, and that was that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it wasn't no, you know, they just took it like someone said, oh, you down there with Nip, yada, yada. Everybody man down. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. the word I got from Unc, so. Oh, you down there with Nip, everybody man down. Who else would he have been with? Like all this playing dumb shit, like, man, and then like, yo, this my thing. Y'all gangsters. Y'all gangbangers. Fuck how I feel. Why are you lying to me? You could just straight up tell the truth. It ain't like you're going to go to jail for it. I'm just saying. Why not? Why the fuck you got to keep lying to us? That makes no sense whatsoever. And then it's kind of insulting, bro. It's insulting. Nip the biggest nigga in the hood. DJ, how you don't know DJ Khaled there with him? At his video shoot. How you don't know? That makes no fucking sense at all. That's like saying you ain't know the marathon store was Nipsey's. Anyway, man. I don't like this shit. I don't like it at all, but, you know, grown-ass boys got themselves involved in it. And when they became grown-ass men, they kept it going. And shit, Cowboy himself, 50-something years old. With that titty. We out.